Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 29th, 2022, around 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including multiple tropical cyclones ongoing in the East Pacific Basin and why a hurricane could hit the United States with the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we notice that it is pretty quiet across the basin for now, so that's certainly some good news. We do have just a small area of a tropical disturbance right now in the Atlantic, but this is a weak tropical wave. Kind of reminds me of a mesoscale convective system. And this will be moving westward over the next couple of days and not really expected to impact land at much, really. This will be entering the Caribbean and especially the Lesser Antilles over the next few days. It could bring some showers and thunderstorms, but no significant impacts there at the moment. And as of right now, we do have Africa, which remains pretty quiet. Now, for the viewer submitted weather forecasts for today, we're looking at St. Pete, Florida first. Today, 95 degrees with a 95 degrees. That is very hot. A 0% chance of showers and thunderstorms today. East wind at 5 for the evening forecast, 77 degrees. 0% chance of showers and thunderstorms. A north wind of 10 miles per hour. And for Vero Beach, Florida today, Partly cloudy, temperature of 89 degrees, 0% chance of rain. Southeast wind at 15 miles per hour for the evening forecast, 77 degrees, 0% chance of rain, and a southeast wind at 10 miles per hour. So leave your comments down below if you want to see more of this for your specific location. I will be make sure to include them in the next video. Looking at the East Pacific systems, we have Tropical Storm Frank. Still a tropical storm, but it is now getting close to hurricane intensity. Maximum sustained winds are forecast to be around 100 to 105 miles per hour for peak intensity. We also have a new tropical storm, Tropical Storm Georgette. Maximum sustained winds are near 60 miles per hour, and the sustained forecast is for 60 miles per hour, so meaning this has reached its peak. If we look at the visible satellite imagery here for both systems today, we notice that this is Frank over here. Actually starting to become whale better organized today. This is Georgette also out here. Both of these systems are moving away from land and pose no significant concern over the next couple of days to any part of Mexico or the Baja Peninsula for that reason. Now looking at the Atlantic Basin and when things will start to look up, well, let's go ahead and first of all jump into the zonal wind anomaly forecast from the GFS because something important is starting to happen here. Now if we look at how the GFS plays out for the zonal wind, basically what we're looking at is the departures from average for the east and westerly winds in the atmosphere. This is at 850 millibars, so 5,000 feet off the ground. And this tells us a lot about our sea surface temperature profile. Now, if we look at the main development region, which is kind of this area out in here and eastern parts of the MDR, we notice that as we go through August 6th, which is down here, we notice that we have constant westerly winds, uh, more than anomalous. These are anomalous westerly winds. And what this basically tells us is that we will have a period of increased warming across the main development region throughout this period of time, which allows the MDR to warm quite substantially. If you look at the East Atlantic sector already, the MDR, especially in the eastern part of the MDR, has significantly warmed over the past couple of days. We actually noticed that we reached a peak, uh, a negative peak here, of about just 0.05 degrees Celsius above the long-term average. So basically almost falling within that neutral category. But now we've shot up to just about half a degree Celsius above the long-term average. And if we combine that with the accumulated cyclone energy forecast coming off of the ECMWF monthly forecast here, uh, this goes out for the next 26 to 32 days. And this basically shows that we have increased tropical cyclone activity in the main development region, basically one, uh, 120% uh, above average what the climate mean is. So this basically tells us that we have the increased potential of tropical cyclone activity and the East Pacific Basin seems to be at 0 0.9, so 900%. And this seems to be, or I'm sorry, that actually is less than the climate mean, so not 900%. That is actually negative 100% there, which indicates that we have the potential for reduced activity in the deep tropics of the East Pacific. So that definitely leads to the favorability shifting towards the Atlantic Basin from there. Now, if we look at the GFS forecast, it's the 850 millibar vorticity, so the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. We're looking really to see what's going to be happening over the next couple of days to the next few weeks or so. 
Now on the GFS forecast, there's actually really nothing to talk about here, at least in the 850 millibar vorticity. We noticed that there's actually more tropical cyclone activity in the East Pacific. So when is everything going to start to shift? Well, for that, let's look at the European ensembles here and we need to look at the ensemble mean sea level, or I'm sorry, we're gonna be looking at the zone of wind anomalies first, getting ahead of myself. Uh, so let's look at the zero Z uh, model run here. We notice that generally speaking throughout the entire uh, forecast, all the way out through the 15 day forecast here, we have these anomalous westerly winds that continue across the entire main development region. This basically allows for a substantial warming of the MDR and that allows for increased instability out there across the deep tropics while simultaneously having the subtropics be cooler allows for a greater instability. We look at the PWAT anomalies here. This basically just tells us throughout the entire 15 day period uh, that by the end of this forecast cycle, we actually do have some pretty moist, anomalous moist air in the atmosphere uh, in the main development region, certainly the southern part of the MDR. And this certainly would go to favor the increased potential for some tropical cyclone activity, or at the very least, some pretty strong tropical waves that do have a chance to go on to develop into a tropical cyclone. If you look at the upper level wind environment really at this time is also pretty favorable, especially across most of the central and eastern part of the MDR. We have a pretty favorable upper level environment. However, the upper level environment is not so conducive as you head towards the island chain and that is just a result of some leftover westerly wind and really just kind of induced by a tropical upper troposphere trough that is actually located over here near the Dominican Republic and Cuba. And this tight here is going to be generally responsible for some of these anomalous winds that will be creating a, a really big amount of shear across the Caribbean, but that seems to be dissipating with time. And so as we move forward in time past the forecast period here, that should be completely removed by about August 20th or so. So one of the things that we're going to be looking for is why there might be a threat for United States based landfalls this season and to that extent also the Caribbean. So let's look at the climate forecast models. This is the CANSIPS model. This is the 500 millibar geopotential height anomalies. So we're looking at about 18,400 uh, 18, feet in the atmosphere. And what we noticed that this is for the month of July right now. So we have not really a large amount of ridging, but there is some out there. Generally speaking, though, we actually kind of have a trough uh, feature that's kind of located over the Canadian prairies. And this is generally not a super favorable look for seeing landfall systems. Uh, but move this forward a month and then eventually two months. Look at how the pattern certainly evolves. We have that pattern shifting towards greater heights over really the Canadian Maritimes and the North uh, Seas of the Atlantic. And what this generally does is it creates a big ridge of high pressure out here. And that generally does not allow for tropical cyclones to recurve as easily. Now, if we look at these uh, precipitate water anomalies for the next three months here, this is for August, September, and October, we can kind of see how that's playing out because we actually have below average precipitation over the subtropical Atlantic and above average in the Caribbean and then above average across the Gulf and Eastern seaboard. So this is certainly something to kind of keep in mind. This doesn't necessarily imply an implicit tropical cyclone track, but it certainly does give some alarm bells that there's something going on here that warrants the attention. And this is not just the, uh, the CANSIPS forecast here. The North American Multimodal Ensemble forecast for the same time period is also doing the same exact thing for August, September, and October. It is showing the below average precipitation in the subtropics, above average in the MDR, and off the eastern seaboard. And this certainly raises my attention that we could be dealing with enhanced tropical cyclone uh, impacts to the United States and the island chain, the entire Caribbean, and the eastern seaboard this season. And again, that is responsible because of that upper level blocking pattern that we've seen in some of the forecasts here. And even the CFS forecast, again, kind of goes with much of the same pattern uh, for October. Pretty decent blocking pattern out here, just allowing for these tropical cyclones to uh, really make their way towards land. So certainly is now the time to prepare because I think become peak season, we're going to have a very busy time on our hand. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.